Welcome everyone to the webinar. This is one webinar in our memory improvement course series and this topic is going to be on how to turn numbers into images to, rem to remember a list of anything. So I think you're going to find this to be a very very useful way um, to apply this system that we're going to learn. It's actually very simple to use and very very reliable and it's very good for helping you remember a list in order. So let's take, this is going to be the goal of today's webinar. I want to try to get you to memorize a 20 item list and not just 20 items but in order now that's no easy feat um, a lot of people would try you know they, they think about this how would somebody try to memorize a list for example I'm gonna give you the um, it's not a 10 item list it's actually a 20 item list so we're gonna start with 10 and then we're gonna do the other 10 but this is a 20 item list that's gonna be our goal to memorize this entire 20 item list and we're gonna take it piece by piece so I'm gonna show you how to actually implement the system but how would someone memorize a 20 item list if you think about it they might just uh, you know they might try to I guess write it down a bunch of times or they might um, another way to do it would be to repeat it over and over again and if you did this enough times I mean if you did it over a thousand times you'll eventually you know if you write it down over a thousand times or you repeat the 20 item list over a thousand times eventually it'll get stuck in your head obviously however we need a system that is simpler um, that is uh, actually more reliable and that's actually faster because um, repeating something over and over over a thousand times is known as rote memorization where you're just going you're just relying on repetition and repetition is by the way a very important principle to remembering anything repetition helps but we're going to use another strategy that involves less repetition we're not going to spend you know hours upon hours trying to drill in this 20 item list and this is something that you can actually apply to a grocery list that was you know up to 20 items and by the way at the end of the webinar I'll show you how you can extend it beyond 20 items so this is as I mentioned um, the name of the system is the numeric peg system numeric because it uses numbers and we need to use those numbers because there's 20 items and in order to remember things in order that's going to help this is simple to learn and reliable and it helps you memorize a list of anything in order now in order for you to learn this I need your complete attention during the webinar because I'm gonna ask you to be making visualizations that's how this system is going to work we are going to visualize each one of these pegs so let's start here's this list again let's do the first 10 okay um, 1 through 10 you see on your screen right now and we need to try and memorize this 10 item list before we start memorizing you know bread milk tomatoes and all that first we need to memorize what is the numeric peg system how does it work so the numeric peg system is simply taking each number and associating it with a visual so for example number one is going to be a pencil okay so you see on your screen right now I need you to memorize this right now look at that number one make sure that you're not passively you know some people view these webinars by listening to them and opening up a tab <laughs> and working on some other things I want you to actually visualize and see this that's why I put up the the image on the screen number one is a pencil let's do number two two is a swan we're basically trying to say okay what does the number two look like and we're gonna we're gonna use swan as our visual represent representation of the number two. Now let's do three. Let's imagine the three as McDonald's, um, you know, tilted sideways, of course. So it looks like a number three McDonald's will remind three will remind us of the McDonald's logo or the M in McDonald's. Uh, number four is going to remind us of chair. Okay, so if we turn the chair upside down, kind of looks like a four, doesn't it? So five is a hook so visualize the five upside down that's what you need to do with this one this one's a little harder sometimes um, visualize the number five as a hook if you turned it upside down got it All right. let's review one through five really quickly one is a pencil two is a swan three is McDonald's four is a chair five is a hook I want you to think about that right now with this numeric pedic system, the first five. Think about it right now and just think to yourself, um, or if you want to say it out loud, you can say it out loud. I'm going to ask you really quickly, what's one? What does it look like? What's number two? What does that look like? 
What's number three? What's number four? And what's number five? Make sure you've got those first five down and memorized. Good. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Let's move on. We're going to go all the way through ten to begin with. Number six is a cherry. The visual representation of six is going to be a cherry. So picture, you know, this is the circular part, and there's, it looks like a six. Just manipulate it and view that six as a cherry. And again, I'm going to explain exactly how we're going to use this in a moment to memorize. Right now it seems a little odd initially when we're just memorizing numbers as images, but it's all going to make sense later. Number seven is going to be lightning. Um, I want you to picture sevens. Look at all those sevens that are in there. You can think of uh, lightning as just seven after seven after seven. Um, so I want you to picture number seven as lightning. Number eight is a racetrack. Picture race car drivers going around it. It's a racetrack. Um, now, I know they wouldn't really make racetracks this way because people would crash in the middle um, unless the track was ele elevated. But just imagine number eight as our racetrack. Number nine. Nine is going to be a balloon. So picture, you know, the number nine, the circular part at the top of the nine, and then the line going down, that's going to be like a balloon. We want nine to look like a balloon. Now, number ten is going to be simply a plate and silverware. So this is our one, this is our zero, and that makes up ten. So let's review really quickly six through ten. Six is a cherry. Seven is lightning. Eight is a racetrack. Nine is a balloon. And ten is a plate and silverware. Now I want to make sure that you have these these down. So I'm gonna switch off from the visuals and try to think about the numbers. Six through ten. Six was what? What did seven look like? What did eight look like? What did nine look like? Think about it. And what does the number ten look like? If you're able to get those all very good and just a quick review one is a pencil, two is a swan, three is McDonald's, four is a chair, five is a hook, six is a cherry, seven is lightning, eight is a racetrack, nine is a balloon, and ten is a plate and silverware. Okay, now that we've got these, this is our numeric peg system for one through ten. Okay, now I said we're going to memorize twenty items, but we're going to start with the first ten, and then I'll explain how to do eleven through twenty. For the first 10, we need to create the visualizations now. So step number one is having our numeric peg system intact and in place. So we already have it in place. We don't need to memorize that ever again because we'll always remember that number one is what? Number two is, you know, that number one is a pencil. Number two is going to be the swan. Three is McDonald's and so on and so forth. So what we need to do, some of you that have taken our memory uh, webinars before know that the way that we remember things is through association and vis visualization and, all, and also repetition and a few other things but let's take association and visualization we want to associate and a visual visually associate the number one which is a pencil with bread so I want you to picture in your mind picture this a pencil me or you holding a pencil and on top of that pencil there is a loaf of bread okay so I'll rewind that pencil. Just imagine right on top of this pen, you're holding a pencil and there's a giant loaf of bread. Not just any kind of piece of bread. There's a big loaf of bread. And by the way, with all these visualizations, one of the things that helps a lot is any kind of exaggeration, um, any kind of absurdity that we can add in there is going to, believe it or not, help the memory stick. So pencil is going to remind us of, oh yeah, I'm holding a pencil and on top of that pencil is this giant loaf of bread. Okay, now we are, we're on to number two. Number two on the list, what is it? Number two is milk. Okay, so we've got to remember milk. How are we going to remember milk? I want you to picture that swan again. And instead of it l swimming in a lake of water, it's swimming in a lake of milk. Picture that. A white swan swimming in a nice lake of milk. Picture that for a moment, and hopefully you've got that visualized, and now we're going to move on to number three. Three is McDonald's, but what's number three on our list? Three is tomatoes. I want you to visualize the number three, which was McDonald's. And we got to remember tomatoes. So here's how I want you to think about it. I visualized, uh, and you could visualize this as well, because I'm going to actually test you later on to see if you have memorized all these items. So number three, I want you to visualize this. You walk into a McDonald's, 
you order a Big Mac meal, and when you get when you open up your Big Mac inside of your Big Mac, there are giant slices of tomatoes. Okay, just these ridiculously large slices of tomatoes instead of beef. Okay, so you're kind of angry that hey, how come I have this veggie? Big Mac instead of a regular Big Mac with beef, um, so you go back to return it or whatever. But there's giant slices of tomatoes inside of your Big Mac instead of the beef. Okay, so that's how we're going to remember. Three is going to remind us of McDonald's, which reminds us of the Big Mac meal that I ordered, which reminds me that there was no beef and there were giant slices of tomatoes. Oh yeah, I got to get tomatoes. Now number four. What's number four on our list? It's soda. Okay, this is going. The one's going to be easy. Four for. Four is a chair. I want you to picture a chair without regular legs. Instead of the regular wooden legs you see here, let's picture bottles of soda, maybe two liters, two liter bottles of soda for the chair. So the chair has legs made out of soda. Okay, that's how we're going to remember number four, which was soda. Because we're reminded, okay, four is a chair. Oh, yeah, the chair has bottles of soda as legs. Now we got to go to five. Okay, here's five. Five, we got to get turkey. So here's what I need you to visualize. I need you to visualize, first of all, th th we visualized five looks like a hook. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the hook, and I, I associate hooks with uh, pirates. So I'm thinking, and I got to get turkey. So what I was thinking was something Thanksgiving related. So picture this in your head you're at Thanksgiving. And you're told that you have a new family member that you've never met that's going to be there. And he's a pirate, turns out. Or he thinks he's a pirate. <laughs> and he shows up, and he's actually got a hook for a hand. And he's carving the turkey at your Thanksgiving dinner with his hook. So imagine a pirate carving the turkey with his hook of a hand. I know this is very unsanitary, right? So imagine that for a moment, the pirate carving the turkey with his hook. So when we remember five being the hook, that's going to remind us of the pirate carving the turkey. All right? Let's move on to number six. Six is chips. So I need you to visualize the following thing. Six looks like a cherry. So I need you to visualize. Let's say you've got to get some chips. And you open up the bag of chips. And instead of tasting maybe salty or spicy, they taste sweet. They taste like cherries. Okay, imagine cherry flavored chips. I want you to think about what would that taste like? I, I want you to actually think think about that. <laughs> you know, the taste of cherries, you know, probably be a little sweet. Probably, and if you could visualize this and think about how it might taste, that's going to help you remember cherry flavored chips. Okay? Number seven, lightning. Now, number seven was strawberries. What I want you to picture is a big strawberry near an open window and it's raining outside there's thunder and lightning and the the strawberry is right by because we know that lightning is what we got to use here and we got to apply that with uh, strawberry so let's picture that strawberry right by the window and all of a sudden the lightning it strikes the strawberry and the strawberry explodes all over the room. There's red goo all over the place. Um, and by the way, we're purposely exaggerating the size of the strawberry. I want you to visualize not just a regular strawberry. I want you to visualize a huge one. And for some reason, it's by an open window. Lightning strikes it, and kaboom. What would it smell like if a strawberry blew up? You know, if it hits you in the face, all that red goo, what, what would it taste like? Okay, now notice how I'm saying, you know, what, what would it taste like? What would it smell like? Um, we previously did a webinar in this memory improvement course on how to use your senses to remember things better, to improve your memory. And your senses can help you remember things really, really well. That's why I keep asking you, what would that smell like? What would that taste like? Remember number one, the pencil? Number one is a pencil, and we had this loaf of bread on it. Pick, imagine yourself taking a bite out of that loaf of bread, and it's fresh bread. What does fresh bread taste like? If you could imagine that, that's going to help you remember number one even better. So number seven is the lightning striking is giant strawberry, and the dr strawberry explodes. That's how we're remembering number seven on this list. Number eight. Number eight is deodorant. How are we going to remember deodorant? Well, let's rewind. What's number eight? Eight is a racetrack. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if they made racetracks this way, where people would be crossing this intersection here, um, 
people would be really nervous because when you get to that intersection, you might crash with someone. So I want you to picture some NASCAR drivers driving around a racetrack, and when they get to the middle, they get a little nervous, and when you get nervous, what happens? You sweat, and when you sweat, you start to stink. And these are stinky NASCAR drivers that are in dire need of some deodorant. So, number eight is going to remind us of a racetrack, which reminds us of the race car drivers that are stinky and sweaty because they're nervous about that intersection and they really, really need some deodorant. That's how we're going to remember number eight. Okay, let's move on to number nine. Nine is cucumbers. So, we need to take our visual image of the number nine, which is which was a balloon, and we need to associate it visually to cucumbers. Now, let's not picture the balloon you see on your screen. Let's picture a bigger balloon, like a blimp, okay? I want you to picture like the Goodyear blimp, but instead of it being a blimp, a Goodyear blimp, it's going to be a giant cucumber, okay? Because that's what's on our list, that's what we need to remember. So let's picture, nine reminds us of a balloon, not just any balloon, a giant blimp, and it is a cucumber blimp floating across the sky. Now, all of these images do not have to make sense. Keep that in mind. And it's actually better if they don't make it make any sense. So nine is the cucumber blimp. Ten. We have to remember cereal. Okay. And, uh, you know, this is a plate and silverware. We could picture this as a bowl, but I, don't, I want you to exaggerate the size. Let's, let's imagine a giant bowl, a bowl that's, you know, just ridiculously large. I'm thinking almost like a, like an Alice in Wonderland. Everything is, is is exaggerated, right? Everything is huge, and you can almost picture this giant bowl with giant cornflakes falling from the sky. Gi you know, pieces of cereal falling into this bowl from the sky. That's how we're going to remember number 10 being the plate with silverware, okay? So number 10 is plate and silverware. We picture the giant bowl, and we know that, okay, this is a uh, cereal. Okay, so now we got these things. Let's really quickly go through them. One is a pencil. We're picturing a loaf of bread on top of a pencil. Picture that for a moment. Number two is a swan. A swan swimming in a lake of milk. That helps us remember milk. Number three is McDonald's. So that helps us remember going into the McDonald's, getting the Big Mac. And inside of the Big Mac, there were these giant slices of tomatoes. Number four was a chair. And we're remembering, oh yeah, the chair had legs that were made out of soda bottles. Number five was a hook. So we were reminded of this pirate uncle that came to our Thanksgiving. And uh, they were, the un uncle was, this pirate was carving the turkey with his hook. Six was cherry. Okay, and that reminded us of, oh yeah, th there were some cherry flavored chips. You open up a bag of chips and they were cherry flavored. Seven was lightning. That reminds us of what? We think of the lightning and we remember, oh yeah, the lightning was striking this strawberry that was right by the window and the strawberry just explodes. Number eight was a racetrack. And we remembered that the racetrack drivers were getting nervous when they got to the middle there. And because they got nervous, they get sweaty and stinky and they need what? They need deodorant. Number nine is a balloon. Not just any kind of balloon, a huge balloon. A cucumber blimp. Number 10 was a plate and silverware, and that is going to help us. We think of the giant bowl, maybe some silverware on the side, and cereal falling from the sky inside of this bowl. Now, if we've done our job correctly, we've memorized 1 through 10. I hope so. Now, let's see. Let's see if you can do it. I want you to think about it right now. We've only spent a few minutes memorizing the 10 item list. And the cool thing about this uh, numeric peg system is that a lot of people can get this pretty easily and know the list. Actually, you're probably, if you've got a separate sheet of paper, you can write down the list right now. Try it out. See if you can remember what's number one. I'll give you a moment to write it down. Or, th or if you can't write it down or type it out, think about it. What's number two? Let me throw a curveball at you, and let's, uh, let's see if you can remember number five. How about number six? Can you remember number six? Think about what's number nine. Notice how I'm going out of order, and you could still, if you, if you, here's, here's how we do it, if you're getting tripped up at this point. Um, I'm, I'm, I ask you, what is number four? So you start off and you think, what does the number four look like? Oh yeah, it looks like a chair. 
and then you remember what what was going on with the chair. Oh yeah, the chair had legs made out of soda bottles. How about number three? Do you remember number three? If you can't remember it, picture what does the number three look like. That's where you start, and you know it looks like McDonald's. And then what does that remind you of? Okay, and if you said tomatoes, you've got it correct. What about number seven? What does number seven look like? If you said lightning bolt, you were right. And what, what, what's going on with the lightning bolt? If, what, what do you remember? What's the item on our list we got to remember? And if you said strawberries, you've got that one right. Number eight, eight is a racetrack. Oh, yeah, I remember deodorants, right? Number 10, what is the item for number 10? Write that down. Now, if you've got items number 1 through 10, very good. We've only spent a few minutes on this. And actually, if, uh, if, I, if I didn't have to spend the time introducing to you that 1 is a pencil, 2 is a swan, and so on and so forth, you would have been able to you know, create these associations and visualizations much faster. Now, keep in mind the visualizations that I gave you earlier, such as 1 being a pencil, you might say you can do these in your own way. You could say 1 is a pen if you wanted. You know, maybe number two doesn't look like a swan to you, so you find something else that looks like the number two. So for example, number seven, one person told me, okay, I don't like seven being lightning. I would prefer if seven was a hockey stick because this person played hockey. Well, if that works for them, then that works for them. So keep in mind, you can customize these. These were just my propositions and what we're working with in this webinar. Let's continue on because you know what? We've got one through 10. I think you, you've got this pretty well. Now, if you didn't get the list, because here's the list right on the screen right here. If you didn't get the list, usually it means that you didn't try to visualize you know, what we we're talking about. So if you didn't, a lot of times I'll say, okay, um, picture a pencil with a loaf of bread on top of it. And someone says, yeah, I know what that looks like. But they don't make an active effort. This takes really less than, you know, five seconds or ten seconds to stop. Maybe even close your eyes and visualize it in your head. So, shall we add more items? Let's go, how about going up to 20 items? This is going to be a little bit of an effort here. So, but I, th I, I think we can do it because, uh, you know, the way we remember things is through visualization. So how are we going to remember 20 items that is the question because we know we have our pegs for 1 through 10 1 is a pencil 2 is a swan 3 is McDonald's and so on and so forth so here's how we remember up to 20 items we have to create an, a theme an action theme so for 11 through 20 we are going to create the theme of fight okay so the theme is there's we've got to somehow associate the visualization of a fight happening now Hear me out. I'll explain exactly how we're going to do this. So let's start off here. And here's the, uh, here's the list, first of all, 11 through 20. So we got to get honey, eggs, yogurt, flour, cheese, um, coffee, fish, olives, toothpaste, and ice cream. So we've, now this 10-item list has turned into a 20-item list. Well, how are we going to uh, do this? We have to somehow integrate these things. So here's, here's the basic formula. We need to take, I want you to look up here because you see these crazy visuals down here. Look up here. We are going to take for 11, we need to take 1, which is the pencil, plus fight because it's in the area of 11 through 20. And then we know we have to get honey, so we have to add honey in there somehow. So I want you to picture this crazy visualization. So the formula is pencil plus fight plus honey equals... You fighting a bee with your pencil sword to get its honey. So I want you to picture yourself, take a moment to picture yourself fighting a bee with a pencil of a sword. Okay? You see the pencil there says to draw blood. How clever is that, huh? So you're fighting with this pencil sword, a bee, because you want to gain access to that bee's honey. Okay? Visualize that for a moment. Okay? Now, number 12. Same kind of formula. We know that we start with number two, which is a swan, and then we add a fight happening. We try to visualize a fight of some sort, and then we know we got to get eggs. So we have to go swan plus fight plus eggs, and here's the visualization that I'm suggesting. Let's try to visualize a swan fighting another swan to protect her eggs. I know that sounds a little odd, 
Okay, but just picture the swan's eggs over here. Of course, this is what swans look like fighting, apparently. Um, and that will help you visualize. So the way we'll remember this later is we'll start off with 12, and we'll be like, okay, first of all, what's 2? Now, 2, I know, was a swan, but it's not milk because, you know, we know that number 2 was milk. So we have to remember swan, and because we know it's 12, we know there's a fight involved. And then we're reminded, oh yeah, there were two swans fighting over some eggs. Maybe they're trying to figure out whose eggs they are. Maybe one is saying, I'm the baby's mama. The other is saying, I'm the baby's mama. And there's all types of trouble there with uh, swans fighting amongst each other. Let's go to 13. 13 is yogurt. Okay. The formula. <laughs> we take McDonald's, which is number three, plus fight, because we're in 11 through 20 plus yogurt, and we have a showdown, a face-off between McDonald's versus Starbucks. Who has the better yogurt parfait? Is it McDonald's? Is it Starbucks? Um, what do you think? Well, that's the visual we're going to come up with here. We're going to picture, um, I don't know, if we could picture <coughs> even more, we can picture uh, Ronald McDonald from McDonald's fighting this uh, mermaid from Starbucks, and they're fighting over uh, who has better yogurt or fighting for the yogurt. I don't know. So we come up with this crazy visualization, and the way we're going to remember it later is McDonald's, which is 3 from 13, and we know there has to be a fight involved. Oh, yeah, McDonald's and you know Starbucks, they're fighting, um, and this is all because of yogurt. Who has the better yogurt? Okay, let's move on to number 14. Number 14 is flowers. Okay, well, 14, the 4, we have to do chair plus fight plus flowers. So a chair fight with the winner getting flowers. So you can see these two people fighting with their chairs. And the winner is going to get some flowers. So we want a picture, okay, a chair fight for some flowers. Okay, try to picture that chair fight. Okay, and make sure that you know that the winner is getting, picture that winner, um, you know, sitting on the chair, maybe, you know, holding their bouquet of flowers as the winner, okay? 15 is cheese. We have to remember this. We have to take the hook, because 5 is a hook from the 15. We have to add a fight, and we have to add cheese. So we're going to picture pirates fighting, and the winner getting cheese. This cheese right here with the little uh, skull and all of that that says R at the bottom. Okay, so picture, you know, the f five is going to remind us of the hook, which reminds us of pirates, and we know we have to be fighting, and they are fighting over some cheese. Okay, and picture, look at that visual and try to picture that this is specifically pirate cheese. Okay, it's not just any kind of cheese, it's cheese for pirates. Let's move on to 16. Cherry, we have to remember coffee. So we know six is a cherry, we have to add a fight, and we have to add coffee. So... I want you to picture an angry cherry fighting an angry coffee bean, okay? So we're, when we're reminded of this, we're thinking, okay, 16, 6 is cherry, there's a fight. Oh, yeah, I remember there was a cherry fighting this coffee bean. Oh, yeah, I got to get coffee. You see how that works? So this is how we're going to remember 16 being coffee. 17, the formula is lightning plus fight <laughs> plus, I spelled that wrong there, plus fish equals a lightning striking some fighting swordfish as they jump out of the water. So picture, we start off with lightning, and the lightning, remember earlier the lightning was striking the strawberry? Okay, but now we got a picture lightning and there's some kind of a fight. Oh yeah, the lightning was striking the swordfish. They jumped out of the water, and as they jumped out, I want you to picture both swordfish being electrocuted by the lightning. Poor swordfish. Well, that's how we're going to remember that 17 is fish. Okay? So somewhere from that image, we're going to recall the image, and then we'll be able to tell, okay, 7 is the lightning. Okay, yeah, it was, it was a fight. Okay, lightning. Oh, yeah, it was a sword fight among fish. Fish, i got to get fish. All right. 18 is olives. Now, this one I don't have an image for because uh, I just couldn't find it. The image that I came up with was a little ridiculous. And it was just too hard to find any kind of images. Um, so we have to do racetrack, which is eight, plus a fight, plus olives. So in my mind, and I want you to picture this in your mind too in order for you to memorize it. I want you to picture race car drivers because we know that's number eight. They're going around a track and they're fighting with each other by throwing olives at each other. So picture, you know, 
A race car driver driving right up to the other race car driver. They lower their window and throw, th they're throwing olives at each other to kind of distract each other to make the other person mess up and kind of crash. So picture some race car drivers going around the track throwing olives at each other. Okay? So we actually have two images for, um, <laughs> for the racetrack uh, drivers. We have one where they're sweaty and stinky. And the other one, that reminds us of deodorant, and the other one where they're driving around the racetrack and they're fighting and they're throwing olives at each other. Now, 19, toothpaste. So we start off, the formula here is balloon. So we start off with balloon, and we know we got to add fight. So the balloon plus fight plus toothpaste equals this crazy image of balloons fighting with the losing balloon exploding full of toothpaste. So... Whatever balloon loses just explodes, and I want you to picture toothpaste going all over the place, and uh, that's how we're going to remember this. So you can picture the angry birds over here, angry bird balloons over here fighting with each other, and the losing balloon explodes with toothpaste going all over the place. Okay, that's how we're going to remember 19 being toothpaste. Now, if you're still with me here on 20, we've got to remember ice cream. So the formula we know that. The zero is coming from 10. Remember the plate? So we're taking a plate. Because it was 11 through 20, we got to add a fight. And we got to add ice cream. So again, I don't have an image for this because I couldn't find it. But you can picture plates fighting with utensils over who gets the ice cream. So I want you to picture, you know, angry plates. Maybe the plates have you know, faces on them, and they're fighting with their utensils, and they're breaking plates here and there, and they're trying to fight over who gets, um, who gets the ice cream. Why? I don't know. It doesn't have to make sense. But if I can picture this visually in my head, guess what's going to happen? It's going to stick. Let's see if we can remember 11 through 20 real quick. So just a quick review. 11 was honey. So we rem were reminded of one being a pencil. And that reminds us, oh yeah, there's a fight because I'm within 11 through 20. Oh yeah, I was using a pencil, a pencil sword, to fight, what was I fighting? Oh yeah, I was fighting a bee. <laughs> and I was fighting the bee because I wanted its honey. That's how we're going to remember honey. Now, 12 was eggs, so we took swan plus fight plus eggs. So we were picturing some swans fighting over whose eggs we're, you know, we're over there. So swans fighting over, over to protect, maybe one swan fighting another to protect her eggs. 13 was yogurt. We remembered McDonald's. That reminded us, okay, there's also a fight going on, and we've got to remember yogurt. So there was McDonald's. There was a showdown between McDonald's and Starbucks over who has the better yogurt parfait. Is it McDonald's or Starbucks? That's what we remembered for 13. 14, we start with a chair, and we know there's a fight, so it's a chair fight, and the winner from this fight gets a lovely bouquet of flowers. How nice. Number 15 was, look at that, hook plus fight plus cheese equals pirates fighting and the winner getting cheese. So we know with the chair fight, where the winner is getting flowers because there's two ladies fighting here. And with the pirates fighting, the winner gets cheese because for some reason... Uh, Pirates like cheese, maybe because it's similar to the color of gold. So 16 is coffee. So we remember, okay, 6 was a cherry plus fight plus coffee equals an angry cherry fighting an angry coffee bean. Who will be the victor? 17 was fish. So we took the formula of lightning, which was 7, plus a fight, plus fish, and then we came up with the visual image of lightning striking some swordfish as they were jumping out towards each other. They were fighting with each other with their swords, and it just kind of kills the fish. Poor fish. So that's how we remembered number 17. Number 18, the formula was racetrack plus fight plus olives. We had to remember olives here, so we pictured some race car drivers driving around a track, and they were fighting each other by throwing olives at each other through the windows, window by window, going trying to really make the other person crash. 19 was, was toothpaste, and we were picturing balloons that were fighting. And inside every balloon is a bunch of toothpaste. And the losing f balloon explodes, because that's how you lose in a fight with balloons. You get popped, and toothpaste explodes all over the place. 20 was ice cream, so we remembered, okay, 20. we got to take the 10, which is a plate, because we're at 0 here. So that reminds us of a plate. 
And then we got to remember there's a fight happening because we're 11 through 20. And ice cream is what we got to remember. So let's picture some plates that are fighting. They're having a furious fight with their utensils, forks and knives. They're hitting each other. They're breaking plates all over the place. And they're fighting over some ice cream. They really want this ice cream. And, of course, yeah, I couldn't find an image for that particular one. Well, can we remember 11 through 20? I wonder. I wonder if you've been paying attention, and I, I'll give, I'll cut you some slack here because you, you know this webinar is longer than the average video that people watch. But if you've been paying attention, you probably can remember 11 through 20 if you created the visuals in your head, if you were picturing them. So let's start with number 11. I want you to write them out right now, really quickly, and I will guide you through how you're going to remember them. Number 11. We take the number one. And we remember, oh yeah, number one was a pencil. And I know that there was some kind of a fight. What was, you, you were fighting with a pencil sword, remember? Who were you fighting? And what, why were you fighting it? So we remember that we were fighting a bee for the honey. Okay, so that number 11 is going to be honey. Very good. Now number 12, I'm not going to tell you this one. I just want you to write it out. But I'll remind you that number two is, you know that that's a swan, right? And what was going on with the swan? Can we remember what was going on with the swan? So, again, think about this. You know that you have to think of a swan, and you know there's a fight going on. What does that remind you of? Let's move on to 13. 13 was, let's think about three first. Think of the three. And then what you got to do is you got to take the three. You know that that is McDonald's, and you know that there's a fight involved. Okay? So, sorry, we're on 13. There's a fight involved, and what is the fight over? So, three plus fight. Three was McDonald's plus fight. A McDonald's and fight. Think about that, and you've got 13. Write that down. 14. We know four from the 14 is a chair. And then there's a fight. Oh, yeah, there was a chair fight. Okay, and then what does that remind you of? Now, 15. Number 5. What does 5 look like? It looks like the hook. And that reminds us of the pirates. And we know we got to have a fight in there because we're 11 through 20, and our theme for 11 through 20 is there must be a fight. And we know the pirates are fighting, but what for? Okay, and if you've remembered that, very good. Let's go to 16. 6 from the 16 reminds us of the cherry. What is that visual? Think about the visual. What was going on with the cherry? Oh, yeah, there was a cherry, and it was fighting what? What, was, what kind of fight was the cherry in? All right, 17. 17 was a lightning bolt, okay? So I want you to picture the lightning bolt. What was going on in that visual image? And you know there's a fight going on, so keep that in mind. Lightning bolt and fight, what do you remember fighting? Now let's move on to 18. I'm assuming you've written this down. If you didn't write it down, don't worry. We'll go back and we'll review them in a moment. 18, number 8 from the 18 is reminds us of the racetrack. And you know there's a fight involved. There's a racetrack and a fight. Tell me what that image is. I want you to write it down. What is that image? What's going on with the fight? How, what, and ultimately, what is the grocery list item that we have to remember? And then 19, let's remember 19. 19, the 9 was a balloon, and there's a fight involved. What's going on with the balloon fight? What's happening in there? What happens to the loser? Okay, and now 20. 20 is basically, we remember the plate, and we know there's a fight. All right. I'm going to show you 11 through 20, and if you don't want to see the list, if you still want to figure it out, you might want to pause if you're watching the recording here, but I'm going to show you 11 through 20 right now. Did you get them? So number 11, that was, do you remember the image for number 11? You were using a pencil to fight a bee to get a honey. Number 12, what was going on with 12? We were, we were thinking of a swan, that was number 2, and there was a fight. Oh yeah, the swan was fighting off another swan to protect her eggs. Number three was McDonald's, and we remember, oh yeah, McDonald's was fighting Starbucks over who has the better yogurt parfait. Now number 14, we remember that 14, four was flowers, right? And there was a fight. I'm sorry, four was flowers. Four is a chair. The item is flowers. Four is a chair. We remember there was a chair fight, 
between the two women in that image, and the winner got a nice bouquet of flowers. Fifteen was a hook. Five was a hook, and we know there's a chair. I'm sorry, chair. Five was a hook, and we know there's a fight. So we take the hook, which reminds us of the pirates, and we know pirates are fighting, and now that reminds me of, oh yeah, they're fighting over that, uh, that, <laughs> that uh, big piece of cheese. Okay, the winner gets cheese. It was that cheese that had the little skull on it, if you could remember. Number 16, six is the cherry. And we remember, okay, what's the cherry? What's going on with a fight? Oh, yeah, the cherry is fighting the coffee. I got to get coffee. So what, what's 17? Seven is the lightning bolt, and there's a fight. And you remember the lightning bolt was striking two swordfish, and that reminds us, oh, yeah, we got to get fish. Number 18 was a racetrack. Well, eight was a racetrack, and we know there's a fight. But what's going on? The race car drivers are fighting by throwing olives at each other. Let's move on to 19. 19, the nine, was a balloon, and we know there's a fight. We pictured those two angry birds, balloons, and they were fighting with each other, and they were full of toothpaste, and the loser got popped, and toothpaste explodes everywhere. Number 20, we had to remember the zero was coming from the plates, remember? And we had to remember, okay, there's a plate and there's a fight. Oh, yeah, the plates were fighting over who gets to get the ice cream, okay? So, can you remember all 20 items? That is the question. I want you to think about what's number one. See if you could write them down in rapid fire. I'm going to go through them very, very quickly. And I want you to see if you can write these items down. And if you can, that's a, that's a huge success because... This is, a, this is a relatively simple system to master, and you could apply it to other things. So number one was, number two, number three. Now, you're either writing this down or you're thinking about it. Number four, what did four look like, and what did that remind you of? Number five, what did that look like? What did that remind you of? Number six. Think about the six. What does it look like? And what did that remind you of on our list? Number seven. What does it look like? Write it down or think about it. Number eight. What does the number eight look like? And that should remind you of a certain item on our list. Number nine, same thing. Picture the nine. What does the nine look like? Can you remember? And then that should help you remember the item. Number 10, do the same thing. Picture the 10, what does it look like? Write it down. Number 11, now we're in the fighting area. Keep in mind, 11 through 20 is all fights. So we're gonna take number one, which is a pencil. And what do you remember? A pencil and a fight, what was going on with this? Same thing with 12. We know the two is a swan, but there's some kind of a fight going on. Picture the swans fighting. What were they fighting about? 13, do the same thing. 3 is McDonald's, and there's some kind of a fight going on that's associated with McDonald's. What is the fight? And what's the item? Write down that item. 14, take the 4. What does it look like? And then remember there's a fight. What kind of fight? 4 was the chair, and there's some kind of a fight going on. 5, 15 I mean. Picture what the five looks like, and then remember there's a fight going on. Five was a hook. There's a fight with pirates. Sixteen, let's do sixteen. Six is a cherry. What kind of fight was going on with the cherry? What was the cherry fighting? How about seventeen? Seventeen. Number seven was a lightning bolt. There was a lightning bolt and some kind of a fight. What does that remind you of? Write that down. Number eighteen. Picture the eight. What does the eight look like? It's a racetrack. There was a fight. Racetrack, fight. What does that remind you of? What was going on? What kind of fight was going on on the racetrack? Nineteen. Let's take the nine, which was a balloon. And we know there's a fight. Balloons are fighting. What's going on? What's the? Uh, what does that remind you of? What is the item that's supposed to go here? They're fighting, and what happens? Twenty. You want to take the plate and you know there's a fight going on there's plates fighting <laughs> what are they fighting over all right I'm gonna show you 
the entire list now. And again, if you're watching the recording here, and you might, if you're still working on your list, you can pause it. But I'm going to show you items 1 through 20, all of them. And a lot of you, if you wrote them down already, you know that you got them right. And I want you to think about how amazing it is that you're able to tell all of these items in order. And I could actually take the list away and just ask you to think, okay, what's number five? Do you remember number five? And you would think about, okay, number five looks like, huh, number five looks like the, oh yeah, it's a hook. And the hook reminds me of, oh yeah, that pirate that went to Thanksgiving dinner. Oh yeah, turkey, because the pirate was carving the turkey with his hook. And the same thing goes for 15. You would picture, okay, 15, you know that there are pirates and they were fighting. What were they fighting for? And then you're reminded, oh yeah, they were fighting over the cheese. And the same thing goes for, you know, 12. We remember 12. Oh yeah, okay, so I got to remember swan and a fight. Oh yeah, the swan was protecting her eggs from another swan and they were fighting. That's how I remember eggs. So you see here, we've got this whole list, 1 through 20, memorized, without writing it down a million times or repeating it to ourselves a million times. Now, I know that this takes a little bit of time to come up with the images and things like that, but if you really needed to remember 20 things in order, um, and the more practice, the more you use this numeric peg system, the better you get at it. Um, by the way, this uh, list that you see on here, um, number 1 through 10 is an actual list that I had to get a number of months ago um, and I actually used this numeric peg system to memorize it. Uh, my wife usually goes shopping for the groceries but this time around uh, she asked me, actually in the middle of the week, she asked me if I could get a few more things. There were 10 items and I was able to memorize these 10 items using this numeric peg system in probably about 3 minutes and that's because I knew already that 1 is a pencil, 2 is a swan and I just made the visualizations very quick. Now, the, this 11 through 20, I actually added this before I started the webinar. And the way I added it was I knew that, okay, 11 through 20, I'm going to create a theme for 11 through 20. It's going to be a fighting theme. And now all I did was I had to remember these 10 items. So these 10 items I just added, you know, this was probably an hour before the webinar. And I, I was able to memorize these items. It probably took me about, I would say about five minutes to create the visualizations and then to memorize them. So it doesn't take long, and the more you do this, um, I would say for most beginners it might take them a little longer, just by a little longer, I don't mean much longer, maybe 10 minutes to create the visualizations because you know, you're new to it, but the more that you create these kind of visualizations, the better you get at it. And you can apply this, you can reapply this to other things. Um, by the way, quick test, can you remember number four? Ah, okay. If you can, very good. You remember that number four looked like a chair, right? And the chair reminded you of soda because the chair had legs made out of soda. What about, you know, what about the number eight? Do you remember number eight? It was a racetrack. What did that remind you of? Obviously the deodorant, right? What about number, uh, what about number 19? Nine was, what was nine? Nine was a balloon. And we know there's a fight. There are balloons fighting. And what happens to the loser? The losing balloon explodes and there's toothpaste all over the place. So if you've remembered these things very good, you can apply it in different ways. For example, how can we apply this to reading? I want to talk about that really quickly. You can apply this very, very easily to reading. Um, you simply would, you would simply basically uh, take a peg for each one of these things. Um, you would take your one being a pencil, two being a swan, and you would visually associate each section of the chapter to each one of your pegs. So number one would be a pencil, number two being a swan, and so on and so forth. So after you're done reading your chapter, you put numbers next to each, num each one of the sections. And so, for example, I had a student that I was teaching uh, that was going into law school, and they were reading a, uh, some legal material. Um, not legal material, but they were reading a textbook that was talking about constitutional law. And section number one of this chapter on constitutional law was talking about the founding fathers in the US and the writing of the Constitution. That was like what that whole section was about. It was like four or five pages. And so no, section one was about the founding fathers. So we had to memorize section one. Okay, being about the founding fathers, writing the Constitution. So we took number one, being a pencil, and we pictured one of the founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, writing with this gigantic pencil. Okay, imagine him writing the Constitution with this big pencil. If we can visualize that and create the image, it'll easily stick. And then section number two of this person's chapter was talking about 
the federal the the court system in the United States. In the court system, you have the three three different court systems. You have the big court system, which is the federal court system, and then you have a smaller one, which is the state court system, and then you have an even smaller one, the local court system. So with number two, that was section two of the chapter. So we know we have to visualize it with swans. So all we did was we took, you know, three swans, a big swan, a medium swan, and a small swan. And the big swan was going to represent our federal court system. The medium swan was going to represent the state court system. And the small swan was representing the local court system. And so on. And we kept on doing this all the way through the rest of the sections. And I think she had like seven or eight sections. But when she was done reading it, she applied this very quickly. And she's able to remember what that whole chapter was about very easily. Because, okay, section one was about the founding fathers. Oh, yeah, they were writing with this giant pencil. Right? We remember the pencil first, and that reminds us of the founding fathers. So you can definitely apply this to, apply, apply this to reading. Um, now, if you wanted to go beyond 20 items, you would simply add another theme. So if you had to, you would add a theme for 21 to 30. So maybe everything from 21 to 30 has to be drenched in black oil. Okay? So remember how we said number one was a pencil and num the number one on our item list was what? Do you remember? Number one was bread. What if number one wasn't bread? What if number 21 was bread? If number 21 was bread, we would take the pencil... We would put that giant loaf of bread on the pencil, same kind of image, but this time we got to add some black oil to it. So why don't we drizzle some black oil on top of this loaf of bread, and I want you to bite into that loaf of bread with all that black oil. What, what does it taste like? And if you can think about a pencil, a piece of bread on, on a pencil, drenched in black oil, tasting it, it probably tastes bitter, you'll remember that 21 <laughs> is bread, right? if that was the case. So you can keep adding themes over and over. You can really keep building this up. You can build up a theme for 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60. And if you need to remember, you know, a bunch of things, the, the numeric peg system is a very, very powerful way to do it. So I want you to try and apply this as much as you can. Um, and we, we actually went through a lot today because, and I thank you for your attention because this is not an easy webinar um, to go through because you really have to pay attention for the entire time. Um, we memorized 20 items. Here is my unofficial homework for you today. Later on in the day, I want you to try and memorize. See if you could remember that list of 20 items I gave you earlier. And you might even remember it right now. Do you remember number two? Do you remember number five? You know, so think about if you could remember it later on. Now, I, I think you'll be surprised to see that you're able to remember every item, um, or almost every item. And if you're able to do this, then you've done a good job and you could actually reuse this system. Actually, next time you go grocery shopping, try doing this system again. And the nice thing about this uh, numeric peg system, well, it is easy to, it's like a whiteboard. You can erase it and start all over. So long as you're creating some very, very concrete images that are easy to remember. By easy to remember, I mean, Make them exaggerated, make them crazy, make them just weird. And that is going to make it a lot easier for the information to stick. So with that, I want to thank you for attending this webinar. I hope you found the numeric peg system to be useful and hopefully somewhat easy to learn. It takes a little bit of creativity and some imagery, but you know it's pretty easy to get the hang of. And I hope you apply it to other things. And if you want to reach out to me by email or on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, by all means, feel free to do so. Iris does uh, speed reading workshops and memory training at companies and schools throughout the U.S. and even outside of the U.S. So if you want to invite us to your company or school, feel free. We've done this at a number of different companies. We did this at uh, we did this for employees of Walmart. We did this for um, employees of uh, this big bank HSBC, for Google, for employees of NASA. We've also done this at a lot of different universities. So if you want to invite us to your school or to your company, feel free to get in touch with me. And thank you again so much for attending this webinar and supporting this program. And enjoy the rest of your day.